All right, and so this is the Creality K1C. So we have a totally enclosed metal frame with tinted windows all around. So we have acrylic panels. Then we have an actual glass door that has a cutout, goes around the screen. And another acrylic panel on this side. The top is also a see-through, darkened, and it does clip in. We have little magnets that hold it down on diagonal ends and then just empty on the other side. And there's like these little bolts that it goes into. You do have to push it down kind of to lock it in. But here on the top we can see we have very nice access to everything. So there's a couple iterations or upgrades for the K1C versus just the K1 as it is a slight improvement I would say. And the main thing is being at the hot end, the nozzle itself. So this is a new and they call it a unicorn tri-metal nozzle that goes all the way down to the extruder. So it's like one piece really long. And that's supposed to be a really big improvement for not only for higher temperature printing, but also for carbon fiber printing which is really emphasized for this printer another thing here is on the back of the hot end we have a more beefier or stronger more capable overall extruder here that has a stronger grip on the filament and we can kind of see it protrudes here a bit we still have kind of the same routing here with the chain and, and honestly it's practically exactly the same to the original K1. It just has been refined in the right places to be reliable and a better experience. So if we go down here to the bed, we can see we got a new fascia that has the model number there, our build volume, which is the same, and our smooth PEI sheet, which also is the same, except that if we go here to the very back, we can see there's a little brush now where the nozzle can clean itself. And it's obviously removable. And it is only printable here on one side. The other side is just smooth. And we can see this is only for PLA. So if you wanna do hotter temperatures, you're gonna to have to get another plate. And also, this little rubbery clean out here is now gonna to have to be incorporated for the K1C to meet the OEM spec. So that does complicate things a bit, but yeah, the plate is very nice. It's thin, flexible, and should work very well, but you do wanna use glue on these kind of plates. And the reason for that is because it's so smooth, it tends to stick better than the textured ones. And so the glue will help protect the plate which helps it not to stick too hard we do have little bolts there that we butt against and it goes down and that's a great design now there is something new here also but that's from the back we'll get to in a second another thing you guys can see here we have a little camera and the k1c comes standard with it so for the older k1s it was an option but now it's standard and that's great because you can see what you're printing from the creality print app and here we got the two motors for the Core XY, little temperature sensor for the enclosure. And on this side here, we have a really large external blower that helps cool the part down as it's printing. And down here, we have the Z motor that goes up and down. And by the way, those little arrows here point at bolts you gotta take out out of the bed there's three of them and we do have three leads that run the bed up and down here we got a pretty nifty graph you can't see because the bed's all the way down that shows you the different filaments and the suggested temperatures for the nozzle in the bed we got a usb port here in the front also our 4.3 inch very large display and these are very nice and work very well we got rubber feet on all four corners and one thing to note about this door is that it is glass and you have to be a little careful as it doesn't open more than that to not push it too hard as you can crack the glass so yeah but it's a very nice premium feeling door and you do have to install this knob here which is very simple and one thing that we haven't touched on is we are riding on rails we do have like a double rail here for the x and single rails on each side for the y so the PTF tubing actually kind of goes through the top here and there's a cutout in the door, which is interesting that they didn't choose to go through the printer, but the wire goes through and down. So looking towards the back, we can see where the PTF tubing goes. It goes straight to the filament detector. And then right below that, we got the spool holder. So the spool will unwind this way and go through. We got a nice honeycomb design. And over here, this is an upgrade here as we have a little small carbon filter that has little carbon balls in there and it kind of helps neutralize the air but it is kind of small so not sure how effective it is but it does have one and I'm sure it's gonna help a bit so going down from there we have the manufacturing label and we can see the rated power at 350 watts and it weighs about 25 pounds and below that we got the power input port it is fused with an on and off switch and yeah other than that it looks quite clean here in the back also underneath this front Reality logo, we have a LED strip, not very large, but it does create light for the inside. 
And going to the left side of the printer on the bottom here, you guys can see we have the voltage switch for the two different voltages. So make sure you switch that to the correct one. Normally they come on 230. And so if you live in the US, you want to switch it to 115. And yeah, guys, overall, it's pretty much a small upgrade, but significant enough to make it a whole model for the K1 here that makes it a C now.